Hi, Matt Allington here, and today I'm going to share a solution that I used for a particular problem that I came across during the last couple of weeks. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to do some reporting for my local golf club. So uh, I'm a member of a golf club here in South Australia. And in fact, I'll just show you where it is on the map. It's right out in the middle of nowhere up here. So this is our golf club right here in the middle of South Australia. And so the way this data works is when someone comes and plays at our golf course, they pay online through the website. They tell us their postcode or their zip code, and then I can download that data and see where our visitors are coming from. Now, I've got a sample here. You can see down the bottom, this is just made up data for the sake of this demonstration. But notice along the top here that the first name is followed by the word billing and last name is followed by the word billing in brackets and so on. In fact, if I show you the actual data that I download from my WooCommerce website, you'll see that it's got lots of information here, some of which I actually need inside my report and some which I don't. But once again, notice the repeating billing in brackets that's occurring all the way across the page here. And in fact, if I get into further into the data, I can see that I've also got shipping addresses in brackets and so on. And so I thought this was just an interesting little problem. And when I was trying to build this report, I decided to get rid of all of the brackets billing from my headers. And I wanted to use a tip that I've previously shared in a previous blog. I will include a link to that blog with this video and also on my website. But also I've created this situation here where I have this phone home just to illustrate and extend the concept a little bit. And so the objective is to rename all of these columns at once without having to go in and manually make a change for each of those columns. So let's get into it. So I'm going to right click and edit my customer's query. And I've done a few transformations and I won't spend any time going through that. But what I will do is I'll start with this customer's table here, which currently has, let's see, six columns. Four of the columns has the word billing in brackets. One of them has the word home in brackets and one has postcode or zip code with no extra piece that I want to remove. And so my objective is I want to rename these five columns all at once without actually going in and modifying each column one at a time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this step and I'm going to call this all data. I like to do this without spaces Later on, I need to come back and grab this step. And by renaming it now, it makes it clear to me which step I need to go back and grab. And also by removing the spaces, it just makes it easier to refer to that step later on. So now that I've done that, I need to extract a list of all of the column names. And so to do that, I'm just going to add a manual step and I'm going to extract the list of column names. Now, whenever I do this, I like to put a bracket first. As of the time that I'm recording this video, there is a little bug in IntelliSense. So I like to manually put the bracket in there. And the function is table.columnNames. I hit tab and then I close the brackets. And what that does is it gives me a list of all of the column names within the um, the table that I'm looking at. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to filter this list. And in fact, before I do that, I'm going to turn it into a table. So I'll just turn it into a table. And now I'm going to filter the list and I only want to keep the items that have this sort of billing and home. Now there's different ways I could do that, but maybe just thinking about it, the easiest way is I can just say, if it contains an open bracket, then I want to keep it. And so there we have it. There's a list of all the columns that I want to rename. Now, the next step is to come up with a second column that contains the new name. And so the first column is the old name and then the second column will be the new name. And so I'm going to add a column and it will be, I'll extract before delimiter. And in this case, the delimiter will be space open brackets, which is the common pattern. So everything before the space open brackets is what I want to keep. And, uh, and everything after that I can get rid of. So now I have my from column name and my to column name, and I'm going to use that in my rename step in a moment. Okay, so before I can actually use this, I need to turn it back 
into what we call a list of lists. And to do that, I can use a function and I'm going to once again put my open bracket trick. If you don't do that, when I try and type this function, it's going to basically ruin the code that I've got there. And so the special function here is called table.2rows. Table.2rows takes this table, and if I close the brackets up here, table.2rows takes the table and turns it into what we call a list of lists. And so the first list contains another list, and that is the from name to name. The second list is a list from name to name. And so this is why we call this a list of lists. And so this is what I actually need to automate the step of renaming all the columns at once. And so I'm going to rename this to be my, I'll just call it changes. Once again, the key thing, call it anything you want, but I like to give it a name that has no spaces, just makes it easier to use it inside the function. Okay, so here's my list of lists. Here is the data. So the first thing I need to do before proceeding is go back and grab this data. So I'm going to click on changes, click here, and I don't want changes. This time I want all data. I'll just override that and I'm back with the data that I had before, but I still have my list of lists, which is, a, and it's still available for me to use in the next step. So now here's all of my data. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process of renaming these columns. So I'm going to double click and it actually doesn't really matter what I call it because, and I'll show you why in a second, but I've renamed this first column test and notice that it creates this step of code. It does a table dot rename columns. It says, give me the table from custom two and then find the column called first name billing and rename it test. And in fact, if I now do another one, you'll see that this now starts to expand. So every single column that I want to rename has this from name and to name. And this step here, this double curly braces is actually a list of lists. And so this here is a list. This here is also a list. And when we wrap those lists inside a second set of curly braces, it becomes a list of lists. And so I can delete those manually created steps that I did just by changing those column names and I can replace it with my list of lists, which is called changes. So I just do that and voila, in one single step, I've been able to rename all of those columns. And in actual fact, this is a self-healing step. So if at some point in time, there was some additional columns that came in here that started with this bracket, then they would also be included in the rename step. And so that's it. I just come up here, go close and apply. I'll let the query refresh. I need to come back here and replace all of the data that I had in the before, because of course the names have changed. So I'll just bring in some of these things and, and there you have it. There's the new names that have been automatically transposed all at once using the list of lists trick. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this trick. This is just one of many tricks that Ken Pools and Miguel Escobar and I teach at the Power Query Academy. And in fact, we've got a whole suite of learning and training online videos at skillwave.training. So why not head over and have a look at how you can learn Power BI and learn how to go faster and better.